Good morning, Livukeng Jani Mamukasei. My name is Nyari Manyoa. I'm the Client Experience Manager of Nakiso Borehole Drilling. We are the water people. So today I'm going to take you through the borehole drilling process, mm -mm, our borehole drilling process, so that you understand what it is that we do and what it is that you're expected to do for the sole purpose of having water in your home. The first thing I've got to mention is our very dedicated team is willing and helpful at all four stages to make sure that your expectations are met and to make sure that our standards are also met. Let me take you through it. So the first thing that we do is what we call borehole sighting, which is a geophysical survey. <laughs> Let's call that a scan of the underground to make sure that we've, we find the bricks and the fractures under the ground that might contain water. Take note, we don't look for water. We look for the bricks and the fractures underground that might contain water. So when we produce this scan, this pictorial of the underground, we interpret it into a PDF document that we send to you, our valued client, which you then submit to your local Zenwa offices to get the authority to drill permit, um, which is, you know, a regulation that everyone who drills is supposed to have. Everyone, including you. All right, so now that you've got the permit, what do we do? The next thing we do is we actually drill on your premise. So our team, our rigs, we come to your premise, we drill underground for the recommended depth that the siter had mentioned in his scan, in his site survey, and we find the water, or rather we find the bricks and the fractures. Once we do that, once you've got your water, we case the boreholes. Now casing, a lot of people ask me this, what is casing? Borehole casing are support structures that we insert into the borehole to make sure that it doesn't collapse unto itself. So we've got three classes of casings that we use, class 6, class 9 and class 10. Class 6 is of a thinner material, it is more susceptible to underground pressure. We always recommend that you use class 9 and class 10 for best results. After drilling, then what next? After drilling, you you must put a submersible pump in your borehole so that you can extract the water out. I mean, what's the purpose of drilling if you can't get the water anyway? So we've got two types of pumps that we submerge into your borehole. We've got the electric pump or the solar pump. So now, what is the difference or what are the benefits of either pump? The electric pump is good if you already have your electricity installed at your home. It's less costly, it's energy efficient. The solar pump is good for areas in which the electricity is not yet connected. And also, I mean, even if you do have electricity at your home, the solar pump is quite feasible as it means that even though you experience load sheddings, you can always have water in your home. What next? Next, you have the tank and the tank stand installation. Now, here's a tip. Make sure that the people who install your tank stand are really, really good, as in they are not so good. See, we take so much care in our installations and preparations because we don't want you to suffer some fate after three months, after four months, after six months. That's why we say we are the best water people in this country. We know what we do and we do it well. Huh? We love what we do. So now that you've gone through all the four stages of the borehole drilling process, what then? I mean, now you have water in your home. Yay! But what else do you have to do? You've got to maintain your borehole. Every good thing comes with responsibility. Make sure your borehole gets checked at least once a year. Make sure your pump gets checked at least once a year. Make sure that you're on top of your borehole every day at least once a year so that you know what's going on you're ahead of anything that might need repairs that's all i've got for you nakisa borehole drilling the water people and i'm Yari. thank you